satisfying. I was also kind of drawn in by your comment that Ganon felt wedged in. Mm -hmm. um, how would you compare that feeling in Twilight Princess to the, how Ganon was dealt with in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom? Definitely in like, Tears of the Kingdom, he's baked in. Like, he's fully baked in. He's a major part of that story. Yeah. The problem with um, uh, the Twilight Princess is he's not revealed as the enemy until, like, uh, quite a significant uh, portion of the game in. Uh, there's this character called Zant who appears to be the big bad. And then you find out later that um, he got his power from Ganondorf, basically. Um, and that's how that's why Ganondorf feels wedged in, because it feels like the game, the last boss of the entire game should have been Zant. And then they're like, oh, but it's a Zelda game. You have to have Ganondorf. And, mm. and, and so they kind of wedged him in there. Um, and that's very much how I felt um, as I, I think it came out when I was about 16, 17. So as a sort of late teen, I remember talking to my friend about it um, and, uh, and we both agreed. But on subsequent playthroughs, I'm not entirely sure I agree. But, um, I think uh, Ganondorf does fit in. They just should have introduced him earlier. And I feel I felt that way about Breath of the Wild a little bit mm. that you know, Gan Ganon is the Calamity Ganon is this huge, swirling, menacing cloud. It's like he he only has one volume. Mm. Or whereas in Tears of the Kingdom, like you said, he's baked in. Like you see him before he becomes the big bad. Mm. Um, and so I could see why in Twilight Princess that would feel abrupt. It does. Definitely. You don't even see you don't even see him as a menace at the start. Yeah. I mean, I guess you probably knew he was behind it, but... Mm. Well, I think that um, Calamity Ganon in Breath of the Wild does suffer a little bit from this is the big bad syndrome. Just like, like and any big bad could just replace it. You know, it's, it, it doesn't have a character. It's just the big bad of the story. And I think that would be worse if it wasn't kind of a... Um, it was, it's kind of a, a thing for Ganon. Uh, if you play any of the older... Um, uh, Zelda games, like the much older ones, pre, pre Ocarina, Ganon is like that, um, and there's actually a law reason as to why they've kind of uh, they've written it all in, and there's, there's like there, there's uh, there's Ganondorf who's you know like coherent, but then he died, and when he was brought back, he he was brought back basically sort of without much of a brain, um, and therefore he kind of fits into that like tropey I am just a big bad that a lot of the older ones have. Um, so I think that's probably what they were going for with uh, with Breath of the Wild. But I mean, I think we can all agree that Daddy Dorf is the goat, <laughs> and it's, it's just in, in Tears of the Kingdom, he's just such a much more compelling and interesting bad guy, isn't he? And it it's just so much fun to watch, like the the um, the memories and uh, and get to know what he and he no was spoilers. Like. Don't worry, Hannah. We're not we're not going to spoil you. No, I won't spoil it. But um, just as a generic thing. Um, when you do finally face off uh, him, it's so absolutely gratifying when you finally get to give him his because you understand the character. Uh, whereas in, in in Calamity Ganon's case, you're like, yay, I killed the boss. I defeated the game. Tick for me. It, you know, it's a, it's a much more sort of generic feeling. There's not much heart in it. Consider yourself satisfied. <laughs>